Hey Floss Tube, this is Kim. I'm back again with another weekly cross stitching update. This is video number 66, and today is the 27th of April 2020. Uh, we are almost to Mania, so who's getting excited? This girl right here. Um, I worked on three pieces this week, so let's get right to it. First of all, I uh, worked on a Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. For my monthly rotation doing more than I usually do in a month because I don't plan on working on it next month for mania so I am on page six which um, okay so this little pavilion thing these guys it cuts the page right cuts off right where that pavilion comes down and then goes about over here on the other side of the, the three guys right there so I worked on it um, three days three really good days just trying to get as much as I could to get about a month and a half's worth of progress into it so then I can make up the other half a month in June uh, when I work on it so I got about 2100 stitches put in and there we go so it doesn't look like much because I went more vertically halfway along the page um, as if you were drawing, drawing a line from top to bottom uh, halfway through the page and then did, you know, the the sails and the masts are kind of like border work be just because they're all repetitive. Um, so there's the whole piece so far. Again, this is a 28 count mushroom even weave by MCG Textiles. One over one uh, using DMC um, 3808. So I did everything from that little curvy part right on this side of it is where the, the page break was. So the, the side of all these motifs, the mast, attaching the sail, all of this I did. And then the bottom of the sail, that's where the uh, page ends. So it still looks like I have a lot to do, but um, it's not as solidly stitched as more motifs for the rest of the page. So we'll see if I can get that done in June to have my page finish every three months like I always plan. So that is Big Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. And the next thing I worked on was the Peppermint Purple uh, 52 Weeks of Black Work. This is a free stitch along on, on her Facebook page. You have to join the, the Facebook group that I always have linked below when I show this piece. Uh, the, the stitch along is uploaded each week in the group files. And um, every week includes everything that's already been released. So you don't have to look for previous weeks. Um, and I had four weeks to catch up on because it always releases on a Wednesday. Uh, so by the, I didn't work on it until Thursday this past week. So I had uh, the current week to do as well. So there we go. This is 32 Count Jobelin in Cauldron Bubble uh, by Coloring Cotton. And there we go. So I did... The three down here on this row, as well as um, this brown one over here. Uh, the colors are a little strange just because I'm setting up what color. I'm going to use the darker orange, this variegated orange, um, when I get to that week in May that goes across the whole piece. So I just had to be careful what colors I was selecting because I don't want the same colors touching except maybe on the corners like that like this green is they're they're touching but they're not uh right next to each other so i'm trying to pick my colors with that in mind as to which which color i do for what block so there we go that took me less than a day to do four week four blocks worth and then the rest of the week, I did start on um, my Easter egg weekend piece. 
a night early just because the black work didn't take me all day. So I worked on a supersized color expansion museum shelf. I am down here in dinosaur corner working with the stegosaurus, the T-Rex tail, and the book with the mastodon. And you'll see there's a little stone here and then another one here you'll be able to start to pick out. Um, I put my back out again on Thursday morning. I don't know what I did. All of a sudden my back just hurt a lot and I couldn't use it. And I was walking forward like this and, and couldn't stand up straight and uh, I was in a lot of pain. So Thursday, Friday, so Thursday night, all day Friday, and Saturday, I didn't get nearly as much stitching as I wanted done. Plus, I had a headache on Saturday as well. Um, but my back is starting to loosen up. It's still pretty weak, and I have to be really careful not to hurt it again while it's still recovering. Um, but I got a decent amount of progress yesterday. So uh, I put in... 2100 tent stitches over between Thursday night and last night. Um, so because this is my piece for the uh, monthly stitch along uh, around the world in full coverage fanatics for Egypt, because there's a whole corner on, on Egypt, um, I told you that I was going to work on it again this month. So counting the stitches I did earlier in the month to get the page finished and the ones I did so far in this past week. I have uh, 6,200 stitches and I'm going to keep working on it a couple more days this week in preparation for my page finish mania. So there we go. So 2,100 more stitches all around that page since you saw it last week. Uh, it's a whole bunch of, of filling but like confetti filling, so it's hard to be real motivated to work on it because you're you're not seeing individual things pop out. So I will work on this probably a couple more days to get it closer to a page finish. Um, when I said last week in my mania plans that I don't like to, excuse me. I don't like to set myself up for page finish mania. What I meant is like throughout the entire year, I don't purposefully put away a piece knowing that the next time I pick it up will be for mania. Except for like these last few weeks before mania, I was like, oh, okay. Now I can set myself up. So um, I will get this close and close to a page, a full page and then the partial page down here. Um, so I'll get this close this week to a page finish and then I'll put it away. Um, not that I need a break from stitching on this piece. I need a break from dealing with the massively large frame. Um, I love my PVC frame and if you ever have questions I always, every time I show this piece, I always put uh, links to my videos where I talk about how I make it and um, different things about it. I put those links in the description whenever I show this piece. So um, it's hard to deal with, especially when you're trying to get over a hurt back. So I've just been extremely careful. Um, I sit differently when I'm working on this piece compared to when I work on a Q-snap. I have to lean forward more to work on this one because I can't just sit back and, and support the Q-snap with my body in the arm of the couch that I'm sitting against. Um, so I'm going to work on it a couple more days and put it away and work on some other things and then I'll return to it uh, in Mania to get those pages finished. So there are my dinosaurs. I'm looking forward to watching that page finally come all together instead of just a bunch of different pixels. So for this week, I will work on museum shelf, like I said. Um, 
Also, probably the last day of the month, I'm going to pull out my familiar sale because every month when I when I do the next familiar, I also do um, one more month of border. So I'm always two blocks ahead, um, and I don't want to use my uh, page finish mania time to do that. So since these last few days of April, while I wait for mania to start. Um, so the 30th, or we'll see, one of those days, I'll do one more block of border and have the Q-snap all ready to, to do this next block when Brittany uh, releases the May Familiar. She has already given us a sneak peek in her Facebook group, and um, I saw it when she first posted. I haven't seen everybody else's comments yet, uh, but I wasn't able to guess what it was. I could tell that it looked like there was going to be crystals. In the design um, but I couldn't tell what the animal was so looking forward to seeing what goes below Corvus so and so I'll work on that and hopefully have it done um, for the next video and then from the rest of that time on my May will be all full coverage to get those page finishes in um, Unless I run into a roadblock and I need some uh, palette cleansing. The other thing I might work on this week, depending on how much time I spend on my museum shelf, is I might get uh, Friends Forever by Ann Stokes on the Q-Snap um, to get this page a little closer and ready for a page finish. Again, here's the whole piece. So far and then the partial and the full page I'll be working on are here so the partial is just a little bit wider than that strip of black um, and then there's a little bit more black I have to do down here before filling in the rest and there's not that much um, confetti at all so this will go fairly quickly so um, probably work on this a little bit this week and then after I get the familiar done this will this will uh, get more attention I think it's mania anything can happen the other thing that happened um, to us is that my daughter we were finishing lunch and uh, my oldest daughter who's seven and a half came up to me uh, she had already finished and she was off in the house doing something and, and uh, she came up to me, had her hair in a ponytail. She's got really thick, long blonde hair. And uh, she said, Mom, what's this? And she had her hair in a ponytail and she's she's rubbing the back of her neck. Right where, the, where your hairline stops and, and it's just your neck. And I look and I just get one of those like, oh God. <laughs> And I'm trying not to freak out because she doesn't like bugs. Um, and so I tell her to go put her hair in a ponytail and like in the hairband so I can go take care of it. And I'm pulling stuff up on my phone because I have never personally removed a tick before. And she had a tick just above the bottom of her hairline. Like, cause you imagine when they go play outside, it's been nice. It's been fifties and sixties, uh, which is nice for us in North Dakota. Um, and so she's been playing outside, just not in woodsy areas, not in wild areas. We're talking, um, the grass is just now starting to turn green. There's hardly like, there's no grass growth whatsoever. It's all based on what was there before the winter. Um, and she had a tick. At the bottom of her hairline. So remove that, treat it with rubbing alcohol, just like the you know Google said, and uh, yeah, that was gross. Um, but I'm gonna be you know I looked over my other daughter, made sure they had no other ticks anywhere on them. Um, I haven't heard of ticks like we didn't have any tick problems here last summer. Um, but I know once you get into the more woodsy areas, which there aren't a lot because it's North Dakota, um, they're more prevalent. And 
we're restricted within 45 miles of the base right now, active duty folks. Um, but even then, there's some there's some like uh, dam created lakes that you can go visit, and I know there's ticks there. But this is like front and backyards. We're having tick problems, so um, I'm gonna keep my eyes open for that. And of course, the dog is on flea and tick medication year round, so hopefully, I don't have to worry about her. Um, for full coverage for the all of April so far, um, between Museum Shelf, Macintosh Mill, and Trick or Treat, I have over 9,000 stitches. And again, I'm going to be getting more um, for the last few days. So we'll see how my, my April turns up. Now, uh, giveaway winners. Excuse me. It's been two weeks. I had um, between one and three people interested in every pattern that I showed out of this magazine. I told you I was going to tear apart the magazine anyway. So I was offering up the patterns that I didn't want and that Ann didn't want. Um, so this morning I looked at all the comments and I used random.org to pick winners. So, um, I will comment on their comments, but I'm going to show them again. Um, cause who doesn't like to hear their name on a video? The first thing is, um, no one actually wanted the, the kit. So if you still want the kit and are willing to wait for me to mail it off, um, until we open up a bit more, then let me know. But um, there's a page in the magazine that has this pattern then also has uh, the mouse with the dress. And one person wanted that one. That is uh, Selma Han or Selma Hain. So uh, I will contact you to get your address. Or, or I'll also leave my uh, email address below. You can um, Facebook message me. You can Instagram direct message me. Uh, so the next one is uh, Teddy Teddy. Little Teddy Bear. I had three people interested in him and he goes to Ilse Smits. So let me know your information. The teapot design I had three people interested and this goes to the stitcher twin so congratulations to you and let's see uh, the geometric designs are going to test brace Uh, the little cute little alien cards by Lucy Heaton are going to Karen Davis Macon. And let's see. Um, I did have someone, I told you that the, the panda and the bride would be an either or because they do share a page. Um, but I think I can get around it. So the panda is going to Jan R. Jan, I know I've mailed you, mailed you something before in the past, but I didn't save your address, so I, I need your address again. And then for the bride, the page with the model shares a page with the panda. But what I'm going to do is I can take a picture and send you the picture either on Instagram or Facebook Messenger, um, or I can scan it. I have a scanner here at home, and I can email it to you um, so you'll have it in color. I'd rather send it digitally than try to print this because my printer isn't... I have a color printer, but um, I think a digital image would be better. So I can send the rest of the pattern, but the picture of the model uh, will have to get digitally. And that goes to Stitching for Sanity. And... I think that's was the last one. Yes. So those are my giveaway winners. Um, again, let me know if you want the kit but are willing to uh, wait for it. Like we don't all have enough things to, to stitch right now. That is all my stitching content. 
Uh, next is Air Force Stories. So if you're not interested, I'll see you next week for the start of Mania. Um, okay, so this week I have a bunch of, we'll say, mini stories uh, based on my time at uh, Det 12 uh, at Luke Air Force Base. So I told you that the Mission Ready Airmen, the brand new airmen that were um, still under uh, probation, as it were, um, and learning how to be crew chiefs on the F-16s, were the, were the trouble kids. They're the ones that, the reason that I would, had command authority, um, and it's because the, some of them did stupid stuff. I mean, they're 18, 19 year olds and still learning, um, you know, away from the parents for the first time and they're trying all different things. So there's a couple of DUIs I had to deal with, you know, because we were um, on the outskirts of Phoenix. So of course there's plate, you know, some of these airmen, not all of them had cars, but some of them had cars. So they, you know, on the weekends, go and go to a bar or, you know, restaurant or whatever and, and uh, come back and come in through the gate. Well, the security forces, they're pretty smart <laughs> and they'd be caught with a DUI trying to get back on the base. Um, there's a couple times where students tried to climb the base fence to get back on the base. That can get you shot. If you don't stop when they when the security forces will tell you um, there was one person who um, stole from the BX okay so the BX is kind of, is kind of like our mini department store on the base um, so the commissary is your grocery store and it's usually attached um, you know in one big building or right next to the building with the BX um, to compare it to a store off base, I would say most like Kmart, not as nice as a Target, um, not not as much stuff as a Walmart, um, but like Kmart has a little bit of everything, a little bit of snack foods, a little bit of clothing in different departments, um, some home goods, um, a little bit of uh, hunting, fishing, sports, um, just a little bit of everything. Now, depending on what base you go to, your BX can be different sizes. Like when my husband deployed and he, um, he was stayed one day over at a base in Europe, their BX, because most of the people live on base, um, because they're in a foreign country, their BX was larger than a Super Walmart. So we're talking huge and had an incredible amount of things available to it. So the size of the BX depends on what base you're at. But just like you don't want to steal from Walmart, because of all the cameras, you don't want to steal from the BX either. So this uh, student was stealing cold medicine. Not just any cold medicine, it was Corsidin HBP, um, which I wasn't aware until this year. Even, even back then I didn't really realize it. The HBP is for high blood pressure because folks with high blood pressure often cannot take regular cold medicine because of uh, effects. For their high blood pressure and the student was stealing this because he was taking more than the um, directed dose with the intention of getting high so yeah uh, needless to say he didn't stay long in the Air Force but it was amazing you know I was able to stop at the BX and go in their little camera room and I could see how they could um, manipulate the cameras and zoom in and, and just watch exactly what he was doing. I mean, there's no chance. Even at Walmart, um, there's no chance. The one court-martial, like, jury duty that I had um, at Seymour when I was a lieutenant was for someone who stole a straightening hair iron from Walmart with a stolen credit card. Or they, they paid for it with a stolen credit card. So... I mean, there's no chance. Don't try to steal something from a store like that because their cameras, you wouldn't believe how much bit, uh, you know, how much they can zoom in and, and focus and follow you. Um, so, and then the last stupid thing the Mission Ready Airmen did that was educational for me, they threatened the president's life back when MySpace was a popular thing. 
This was during uh, President Obama's administration, and a fellow student uh, made us aware of the threat on MySpace. So then we had to get um, OSI, with Office of Special Investigations, which if you've seen or even heard of the show NCIS, that's the Navy Criminal Services, Criminal Investigative Services. Um, so OSI is, is the Air Force version. And because it was a threat to the president, the Secret Service got involved. Um, did you know there are Secret Service offices all across the country? Not just in Washington, D.C. Yeah, so um, I didn't have much hands-on with that. That, Like, as soon as we notified them, it was all OSI and, and Secret Service. Um, and, of course, they they realized it was just stupid comments on, on a little on a kid's uh, MySpace page. Um, but once you get investigated for that, your name is always on a list. And they track you wherever you go, and if the president ever visits that part of town, you're still on a list. Like, that kid is probably low on the list, but he's still on a list. So that was interesting. Uh, more mini stories. I'm wearing this shirt not because it's attractive. I know it's a really bright color and there's a reason for that. Um, the couple years that I was at Debt 12, they had a, uh, a flag football team because the base had intramural, like between squadrons, intramural flag football. And since my guys, my, my 50 or so instructors, most of, almost all of them male, um, they like to play football. They're, they're maintainers. And so they had a intramural football team. Well, I wasn't going to play intramural football, but I would go to the games and cheer. So I get a shirt and I, my number is number 12 on the back and it says Le Capitaine. And my husband, for the year that he was at Luke, uh, before he retrained, he also played on the Dets team. So my husband had a t-shirt. So I was going to the games to cheer on my guys and also my husband, who were all playing together. And of course, um, while you're playing, you, you get team t-shirts made. So this is uh, the team t-shirt. And of course, you try to go for colors that other squadrons haven't already used. So that's why it's a garish, bright green uh, t-shirt. Um, and then the other football story. There was a couple of days through the three years that we had where uh, the wing kind of had like fun days, kind of like field days. You do you do either um, squadron picnics, you know, movie time within your squadron. You can like the mission of, of flying and training F-16 air crews and uh, crew chiefs isn't going on. It's a fun day. It's a Friday. We're, we're doing something fun. Well, I forgot what year it was. It was after my husband left, so um, it wasn't. It was after 2008, so it was either 2009 or 2010. But um, so it was a debt fun day. We had you know burgers and hot dogs, and we played football, the debt against each other. So we had FTD versus MRA, and then I played, um, and it wasn't even while we were playing. It was like between plays. One of the MRA guys threw the ball back to me so we could start playing again. And I didn't catch it well. And I broke my finger. I didn't know at the time I broke my finger. I knew that I jammed it and it hurt like the dickens. And I kept playing and, and two days later it still hurt a lot. And uh, went, went to the med group and got an x-ray and I had uh, two diagonal breaks on my finger. You can see my, my pinky doesn't uh, go the rest with the rest of my fingers, and I can't close it as tight as I can do this, this finger. So um, one of my MRA guys broke my finger. I'll never be the same, but I can still use it, just not grip really tight with that finger. Um, and I can't make it unless I push it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I always... I continue to give that uh, instructor some shit because he broke my finger. Um, so those are the mini stories from the debt. I have a couple more stories. 
one of them is not good um, and I don't know whether to, to talk about it or not um, it, it was an instructor fatality that I had um, while I don't want no one really wants to hear about a death I think the process that we go through th through the Air Force might be interesting um, so I don't know if I'm gonna share that or not but if I do I'll certainly give uh, warnings beforehand if you don't want to hear that so that is all for now I hope you guys all have a good stitching week have a um, the, for the rest of April and a good start to mania and we'll talk to you next week bye guys <laughs>